So I got two notebooks and why am I getting emotional? If you are not familiar with this book, it is called The Artist's Way, A Spiritual Path to Higher Creativity by Julia Cameron. I have the 30th anniversary edition, so this book has been out for a while. From what I gathered, it is a 12-week course that you follow through. In doing so, you will unlock your most creative self. To be completely honest, this is actually my second attempt going through the book. My first attempt, I did get through the first week, but I think I was still really distracted because I would have to reread whatever I just read multiple times in order for it to stick to my head. And it just made me realize I wasn't really putting in the real effort to doing this. And I really want to give this a shot. I saw so many artists that I look up to talking about this book and I think all of them have only said amazing positive things from following this book. I'll be you know honest like I thought it would be like a fun little trend. I was kind of thinking to myself you know oh it's only for people who have like an artist block. I didn't really see myself as creatively blocked or stuck because I still felt like I was creating just not all the time because you know I'm busy or lazy or I just have a lot of other things to do but when I read the intro for the first time I realized that oh I have been blocked this is the first time I actually like <laughs> used a highlighter in a book so the book starts out with an introduction of what this book will do for you this is where I realized that I did need this book and that I was blocked so here's a sentence that I highlighted. Many of us find that we have squandered our own creative energies by investing disproportionately in the lives, hopes, dreams, and plans of others. It definitely hit me hard, but I do think that this actually applies to so many people, maybe all of us, honestly, in some way or another. This next sentence was like a real like punch to the face and it says, how do you know if you are creatively blocked? Jealousy is an excellent clue. It's funny because I can remember very specifically from elementary school getting jealous of people who would receive more praise or honestly any praise for their art and then I got none or less. For most things when it comes to jealousy, it really comes from like a lack or insecurity within yourself and like for a lot of my art journey, I've been jealous. Why am I getting emotional? It was hard to admit that on camera, I guess. I think a lot of my life has been me being jealous of people's creative talents and creative efforts, which is so sad to say. I mean, like, I don't want to be a jealous person. I think part of why I got emotional is because in school, I feel like they just created an environment where they pit people against each other and it was never really, it never felt fair who gets more compliments who actually gets their work put up and shown in the hallways versus who gets the bad grade and and who gets more you know negative remarks another part that i highlighted do you tell yourself that if only you took your creative potential seriously you might stop telling yourself it's too late anyway that hit even harder saying it out loud that is how just reading the intro i realized like i think i really need this book and I think a lot of people could benefit reading from this book. Everyone is capable of creativity and everyone is a creative person. Now that I got my personal history out of the way as to why I think I really needed this book, I hope that maybe you can also read this book along with me since I really want to go through all 12 weeks so that other people can watch and either go along with me or learn with me through this journey. <laughs> the next section after the introduction is the basic tools. And the two basic tools are morning pages and artist dates. The morning pages, from what I could tell, is just pure stream of consciousness journaling. And you're supposed to do this every morning, first thing in the morning, and you have to write down three pages without really thinking or planning about what you're gonna write. I think for me, the real struggle will be what time I do these morning pages because I'm not really a morning person, but I think more importantly is to get those pages down at some point before you go to bed. <laughs> 
I did do it this morning and it felt nice to get it done early because it kind of makes me feel like I cleared out my mind of all the thoughts in my head and usually when I write something down that I have to do or want to do, I end up actually doing it. I will try to do these morning pages in the morning. <laughs> also in the book it says there is no wrong way to do morning pages. As long as I can keep up with it and do them, I think it's okay. So what is an artist date? An artist date is a block of time, perhaps two hours weekly, especially set aside and committed to nurturing your creative consciousness, your inner artist. You do not take anyone on this artist date, but you and your inner artist, aka your creative child. Uh, I'm very introverted, and yes, I need to be alone to recharge, but the thought of going out on like an artist date by myself is kind of scary. I have done things by myself that seem scary, but I, it's been a while since I've done that. That's gonna be a bit of a challenge, but I will try to plan something before the end of this week. Now that we've gotten through the intro and the tools that we're gonna use, it's time to actually get into week one of The Artist Way, which is titled Recovering a Sense of Safety. As is the theme of recovering a sense of safety, I decided to go back in my bed, which is the place I feel the safest. The first week is all about recognizing why you feel blocked and in the book it basically says that it's because you're scared and that fear usually comes from people telling us negative things about being creative or not receiving enough support as a child for your creativity like as i said before i think going through art school and going through a lot of bad teachers kind of instilled in me that I'm not good enough to be an artist. And I think a pretty common factor for a lot of people of being afraid to be creative is hearing from your parents as a kid that, you know, being an artist isn't really a career. Like, I know that my parents just wanted financial stability and security for me, so they never really gave me a chance to prove myself as able to pursue art. I think the only reason they were accepting of me finishing school with an art degree was because I was like failing all of my other classes. And I do think that they have a change of heart and I do think that now they do give me that support. For me, a lot of that fear comes from not being successful the fear of like not making enough money and then going broke and then becoming homeless or a failure in other people's eyes. I think another fear is that I'm too old. I think all the artists I look up to are usually younger than me or have had their creative talents recognized at a much younger age or at least younger than me and that definitely places this fear that I'm too late and I'm too old to be creative anymore, which is a very silly idea and very ageist, which I'm trying to get rid of that idea from my head, not only for creative pursuits, but for anything, you know? If you're an adult, you're allowed to be who you want to be. <laughs> and so a big tool that the book mentions for combating these fears and negative beliefs is affirmations, which I can definitely say is important. I can say that since I've gotten older, I have been more kinder to myself, but I don't think I've been kind enough to myself for me to really allow myself to create because I'm still very critical of my own work and I always have this self-doubt in me that the things I make aren't good enough, that people don't like my stuff, and that I'm just a bad artist and I'll never get to the level that I want to be at. I also have this crazy thought that like I will never be able to draw or create what's in my head because I'm just not good enough to do that. One of the tasks is to write down these negative thoughts and feelings down and then to turn those into affirmations. Okay, so for all of those negative thoughts, 
I am going to write that I can be successful and living comfortably as an artist. I am the perfect age to be an artist. I am good enough at drawing to create my ideas. For the rest of the week, I'll be trying to finish up all the other tasks as well as writing those morning pages. All right, I just finished my morning pages. It took a while because I think after the first page, I was kind of like hesitating on what to write about. I realized that I definitely hold back from writing about certain topics because it's like too deep or too serious. There shouldn't be anything holding me back from writing anything because no one's gonna read it. I think I was in a weird position because I'm kind of sore now. I did think of a new negative belief that I had and it was that I'm not pretty enough to make art. That sounds so stupid but I just have this like idea in my head that like you need to like look a certain way in order to like be an artist but that that's like dressing more colorful and like funky and artsy hipstery you know what I mean or you have to be like pretty and have like a very unique personality and sense of style I know it's not true and I need to tell myself that that anyone can be an artist regardless of how they look so I'm thinking I actually want to do my artist date today my plan is to go to the stationery store and just browse for a couple hours not trying to spend more than like $30 today though in terms of like non-essentials so Let's hope I can stay in that limit. Okay, I am now back from the stationery store and the market and I don't know why I'm so tired now, but I am. I definitely spent more than I thought I would. Ooh. I did stop myself from buying any more pens, but I did buy notebooks. Let me show you what I got. So I got two notebooks and I'm using the I don't know how to pronounce this brand, but this brand for the first time. And I just really like the color. It's lined because my current journal that I'm using for the morning pages is definitely going to run out of pages, I think by like week four or five. So I wanted to just go and buy the next notebook that I wanna use. And I got this one because I thought the colors were pretty. I know this is a very well loved brand. So I got that and then this is definitely not necessary, but I bought a bullet journal one. It's it's the same brand though. I just really like this pink color. I haven't bought a bullet journal in a couple of years, I think, just because I kind of fell off that whole bullet journal craze. And I had a lot of fun doing it, but it did take out a lot of time and effort. And I was just not very committed to it. But I do think that I miss some aspects of bullet journaling and I kind of just want an excuse to get another cute colored journal notebook so I have this one so after the stationery so after the stationery store I did go to the market I realized that I really enjoy going to the market because I like looking at all of the stuff I could buy and thinking of all the foods I can eat or make. They always have like decent deals in the beginning of the week so I just went and splurged a little there too. Not too much but enough that I spent quite a lot more overall today but I think it's okay. <laughs> yeah sorry bank account but what's done is done. Today is day four of the artist way. I have a meeting in 30 minutes. I woke up at 7 a.m. Got myself ready in about 30 minutes. I'm tired. I'm like so busy at work right now. Yesterday I was basically in meetings all day and I didn't eat lunch because I needed to take a nap. That's how tired and stressed out I was. You know that feeling when you're on like the verge of tears like all the time? Like the slightest thing will make your tears come out? 
I think that's a sign that I'm really stressed out and probably unhappy. I gotta show up for myself, meaning I gotta show up for these morning pages. Today is also another busy day. Lots of meetings in the morning. I need to go on site. I don't really know what else to say because my brain is just like, it just doesn't want to be here, but it needs to be on for work. Good morning from me and Binu. It is Thursday, so day five. I woke up late because the past two days have been long days at work. Not only getting up early and going to site, but also working late because I have a couple deadlines to meet. I have a lot of things to do. So today I decided to wake up late because I don't have any meetings today. I just need to get things submitted. I haven't done my morning pages yet just because I think today is just a really slow day for me. Here's Toki. In the morning, she's usually pretty tired. I don't think she's a morning kitty like her mama. Turtle, on the other hand, has been so active. I think he's just more active during like the warmer months, but I think today is a feeding day, so let me feed him. This is a little bit much, but I think he's, he's a big boy. We can eat it. Good morning. It's Friday. So day six. Oh wow. We're almost done with the first week. Today I'm actually going to the dentist soon. I'm back from the dentist and my what I am calling my little 20 minute walk, which was a task for this week. The good news is I don't have any cavities, but apparently my gums were bleeding. So the dentist knew that I was not flossing as often as I should be. So I'll keep that in mind. I should floss more. So I decided to treat myself and also do a little bit of exploring. Hello Toki. I went to a bakery that I've never been to before. It was pretty close to my dentist office. It was a French bakery, but they didn't have any cannelés, which is like what I'm really into lately. Instead, I got an almond croissant, which is still pretty good. This is the almond croissant. Let me pull it out for you. It's visually very pretty. That's a pretty good almond croissant. Okay, so I found this paper that I've been saving for whatever reason. But it's stationary paper, it's cute, I'm gonna use it. One for the enemy and one as a thank you letter. So the first letter is to my enemy. And um, I'm gonna kind of combine the horror story with the letter because I kind of just wrote in this letter that about an incident that I think was totally unfair. All right, on to more happier thoughts. Let me write a thank you letter. Okay. All right, we did the thank you letter now, which felt much better. It is the last day of the first week of the artist way. So I was thinking about the task that I left off for today besides the morning pages, which was to write your injuries and monsters and turn into affirmations. And I feel like I did that already with the writing down your blurts and affirmations. Uh, was it like the first or second day? And I know part of the task was to write more down as you go. You know, I was trying to take the tasks very seriously and like really dive deep into like my core memories and core moments in my life where I've been put down, where people instilled negative thoughts about being an artist and whatnot. I think I've addressed all of the negative things that have happened to me. And even if I didn't write all of them down, I definitely like thought about it throughout this week, like in the shower, you know, you just have those shower thoughts, invasive, intrusive memories that really haunt you till this day. But when you think about it, no one actually remembers except you because you're the only one who cares. I think I've gotten out all of my negative crap all of like the monsters and the enemies down i realized that yeah it's not actually that long of a list in a way i've 
forgiven some of those people and in other ways I've let go I do think that I was able to turn some of those negative thoughts and blurts into affirmations and I think there's still a few that I'm working on because I kept myself still thinking negatively oh my god I forgot to do my morning oh, okay well it looks like I I just realized I forgot to do my morning pages yesterday I'm gonna compensate and do six pages so three for yesterday and then three for today uh this is gonna take a while so I'll I'll be back anyway so it is the end of week one and the last thing to do before completing this week is a check-in so it says you should check in by hand, like write it in your journal, but I think I'll just talk about it in the video since my hand is pretty cramped up from writing six pages non-stop. I think I did the best that I could with this artist's way. I don't think I did it wrong and I think I gave it my best shot with the circumstances of being extremely busy during work. This week was all about recovering a sense of safety and I definitely think I feel a lot safer now that I've addressed those fears that I had. Anyway, I think that concludes week one of The Artist's Way. I know I didn't do it as like perfectly as I could have, but I still got through it and I'm gonna continue on. I'm trying to plan to upload these every Sunday for like the next 12 weeks. Hopefully that'll also keep me accountable and actually getting these videos out in time. Thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you next week. Bye.